Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Record of Arms. I'm your host, Mark Seven, and as usual, I'm gratified that you decided to spend some of your day today listening to me talk about military history. Today we'll be looking at another topic pertaining to the Spanish Civil War, one that is tangential to some of the discussions we've previously had. A few months ago, we examined in a bit of detail the exploits of the German Jagdwaffe, or Luftwaffe's fighter arm, in the skies above the Spanish battlefields as part of the Condor Legion. Today, we'll look at the career of one of the Spanish pilots that flew alongside the Italians and the Germans in the rebel cause. This man is Joaquin Garcia Morato, who would become the highest scoring Spanish pilot of the war. This man's career is closely bound up with that of the fighter arm of the rebel air force as a whole, and I hope it gives an idea of what this aspect of the aerial component of the Civil War was like. My main source for this one will be the book Fiat CR-32 Aces of the Spanish Civil War by Alfredo Logaluso. I'll also be using some biographical information from an online source called Hakan's Aviation Page, Hakan Gustafsson's website that has a very detailed section covering various biplane fighter aces of the Second World War as well as the interwar period. So with that out of the way, let's go back to the turn of the 20th century, to Spain and its Moroccan territory, where the Spanish ace was being born. Joaquin Garcia Morato was born in Melilla, in the territory of Spanish Morocco, on May 4, 1904. Here he was raised and spent his boyhood. Later entered the Military Academy at Toledo, returning to Morocco in 1923 at the age of 19, where he was posted as a teniente, or lieutenant, in the infantry. As regular listeners will know, this was the height of the vicious Rift War. In April 1925, he enrolled in a flying course in a civil aviation school, and received his pilot's license on the 6th of August of that year. After earning his civil wings, he took an army course using the Avro 504 biplane and became qualified as a military pilot. This earned him a post in a military squadron equipped with the de Havilland DH-9A, a two-seater reconnaissance and light bomber aircraft. The DH-9A was an incremental upgrade of the DH-4, and both types were in widespread service in European and American air forces. He then returned to Morocco when this unit was sent there to operate against the forces of Abdel Krim. Subsequently volunteered for service in a squadron equipped with Bristol fighters based at Nador, just outside of Melilla. While flying for this unit, he took part in 57 missions, racking up a total of more than 100 flying hours as well as earning a commendation. In the course of his Rift War actions, Garcia Morato was often taken under fire from the ground, and the effect of this fire twice compelled him to force land. He was badly wounded in both of these crash landings. After the Rift War, he was posted to a float plane squadron based on the Mar Chica, on the Moroccan coast, and then to a reconnaissance unit flying out of Hitafe Air Base near Madrid. In 1928, he was posted to a seaplane base near Melilla. While serving there, he was again wounded in a crash, this time into the sea. His injuries were more severe this time, and he would be hospitalized for nearly a year as a result of them. In 1929, upon his recovery, he was appointed to a post as flying instructor at the Army's Pilot Conversion School at Alcala de Henares. Here, he added an impressive list of official qualifications to his record. These included certifications for piloting multi-engine, float plane, and fighter aircraft, as well as a remarkable proficiency in aerobatic flying. He was also confirmed in observation, wireless telegraphy, and finally in 1932 as an aircraft mechanic. That year, he qualified and completed the first course of blind and instrument flying to be held in Spain. Having mastered this new certification, he became an instructor. He repeated the process again in 1932, completing the first Spanish course in aerobatic flying, and he became an instructor in this subject also afterwards. While not occupied with his military duties, he participated in several aerobatic competitions, winning some of them, using various types of aircraft including the Consolidated Fleet II, which was a civilian version of the American PT-3 military training plane. In 1934 he returned to combat, flying missions during the campaign to suppress the miners' revolt in the rugged Asturias region of northern Spain in support of Franco's African Army units. His pre-Civil War career reached its highest point in 1935, when he organized the Air Division of the General Directorate of Safety. With the coming of the left-wing Popular Front government to power in February 1936, his fortunes took a turn for the worse. Garcia Morato was a member of the Falange Española Tradicionalista, a small Spanish fascist party, an organization often used as hired muscle by the Spanish right, 
which have been frequently engaged in gun battles and other street violence with the working class organizations which form the political base of the Popular Front. This, his participation in the suppression of the Miners' Revolt, along with his notably devout Catholicism, outweighed his so far outstanding professional record and lost him his place in the Air Force. Despite his having logged 1,860 hours in the air on military missions, he was transferred to the infantry and given command of a machine gun unit in the 18th Infantry Regiment stationed at Girona in the province of Catalonia. When the army revolt against the Second Republic began in the Moroccan territories in July of 1936, Garcia Morato was not in Spain. Leave was easily granted to right-wing officers by the left-wing Ministry of Defense, and the talented pilot had understandably little enthusiasm for his new infantry post. Thus, he had taken leave, and was on holiday in Great Britain when the fighting started. He terminated his vacation immediately and began to make his way back to Spain via France in order to join the fight in the rebel cause. As August began, he arrived in Burgos, where he immediately joined up with the rebel air force. He was sent southwards to the Blada airfield outside of Seville, signed an aircraft, and from there proceeded south towards Cordoba. He flew there in a Newport NID-52 fighter, one of the very small number of fighter aircraft in the hands of Capo Delano's rebel army in the south. The Newport was the standard fighter in use by the Spanish at this time. A single engine, single seat, open cockpit aircraft armed with two rifle caliber machine guns and powered by a 500 horsepower Hispano Suiza V12 engine. The NID-52 was a sesquiplane design, that is, a biplane in which the lower wing was much smaller than the upper. This was a configuration seen in some European fighters of the late 1920s, and somewhat like the parasol-winged fighters that were also appearing at the time, represented a transitional stage between the classic biplane and the more modern low-winged monoplanes that would supersede them. Newport, like other sesquiplanes, combined the drawbacks of the biplane and the monoplane, being neither as maneuverable as the former nor as fast as the latter. Though it had entered Spanish service only in 1930, such was the state of maintenance in the Spanish air service that very few of them remained in flyable condition in 1936. As the air units of the Spanish army had by and large remained loyal to the Second Republic, very few of them were in rebel hands, with the handful of Tablada making up the bulk of the fighters available to the rebels in the first weeks of the war. Once arrived at Cordoba, Garcia Morato would fly his first wartime missions in the defense of this recently captured town. On the 3rd of August, he flew his Newport against the formation of attacking Republican planes consisting of several Brigade 19 single-engine reconnaissance bombers escorted by a single fighter, another Newport. The Brigade was the most numerous aircraft in the Spanish service, a two-seater design of a type very common in the air services of Europe in the interwar period. Most air services operated a similar type, almost all armed with a pair of machine guns in front and one or two mounted on a scarf ring or similar flexible installation in the rear cockpit. The brigade could carry a small bomb load and was used for scouting and artillery spotting as well as being the sole type of bombing aircraft in Spanish service. Aircraft of this general kind would persist until the early years of the Second World War, when they were often known as army cooperation types, but were superseded in their tactical roles by light twin-engine bombers or fighter bombers soon after. Despite the fact that Garcia Morato was attacking alone, his aggressive move disrupted the enemy formation, and after a sharp engagement they withdrew in confusion. Their mission was frustrated, but the Republican planes all escaped unharmed this time. He would continue to fly alone in defense of Cordoba until the 7th, when he was joined by the few other rebel new ports in the south, transferred from Seville under the command of Capitana Gonsedo. Garcia Morato would claim his first air-to-air -air victory of the war on the 12th, when he encountered a formation of three Vickers Vildebeest torpedo bombers from a Republican Naval Aviation Unit escorted by more new ports. These were flying a strike against the advancing forces of the rebel General Valera, and Garcia Morato defied the escorts and chased after the Navy bombers and his fighter, shooting down one of the Vildebeest near Antequera. Not long after this victory, on the 14th, he traded in his Newport for a German fighter, the Heinkel HE-51. These fighters were arriving from Germany, and a squadron was being put together in Seville to fly them. The HE-51 was a standard fighter of the newly created Luftwaffe, but left much to be desired. Though its performance and armament were still very mediocre, it was an improvement over the Newport and a welcome change for the Spanish fighter pilots. The first six of the Heinkels arrived aboard the steamship SS Usurumo, which docked at Cadiz on the 6th. The aircraft were shipped in their packing crates to Tablada Airfield, where they were assembled by the German volunteers who had come along with them. One of these, 
Oberleutnant Herwig Nuckel describes his first days at Templata in these words, quote, Our single-seaters had to be put together rapidly, as we wanted to strike out as soon as possible to the front, breaking open crates, raising aircraft fuselages, attaching wings, and fixing bracing struts. That was our first occupation. In doing so, we established friendships with the Spanish pilot Joaquin Garcia Morado, Salvador, Rimbaud, and others, and with the Spanish mechanics. Many beads of sweat flowed. First Heinkel was ready for operations on the 10th of August. The others followed quickly soon after. German pilots who had come to Spain at this time were prohibited from flying combat missions, and so after a few demonstration flights set about training a group of five Spaniards from the initial group of 18 that were flying for the rebel cause at this time. Those chosen were two captains, Garcia Morado and Luis Rimbaud, and three lieutenants, Miguel Garcia Pardo, Ramiro Pascual, and Julio Salvador. It was at this time that Garcia Morato turned his new port over to Teniente Timoteo Valiente and left Cordoba for Seville. In this early phase of the air war, the Republicans were also flying the Spanish new ports in the fighter role. First aircraft to reach the Republicans from the outside world came from France. When the Civil War began, France was governed by a left-wing Popular Front coalition very similar to that which controlled the Spanish Republic. The Republic also retained the National Gold Reserve, and used its money to buy, among other things, French planes. The sympathetic Leon Bloom government kept the border open with Spain, and French weapons flowed to the Republic across it. The situation would not persist for long, but during this phase of the war, it made the battle in the skies a matter of rebel planes against Republican flyers equipped with French planes, along with a dwindling number of planes left over from the pre-war Air Force. Five Spaniards training on the Heinkels had loosely incorporated themselves into the so-called Esquadrilla Rimbaud, and were committed to the battle for the capital. Along with their German instructors, they relocated to the airfield of Escalona del Prado, near Segovia, on the northern edge of the Guadarrama Mountains, close to the fighting front near the capital. Reconnaissance Bomber Squadron Flying Brigade 19s was also stationed here. Despite some initial trouble with the Heinkel biplane, including a pair of early crash landings, the Escudero Rimbaud acquitted itself favorably in the skies over the central front. Garcia Morado's next three victories were scored while flying the Heinkel biplane from Escalona. On the 18th of August, he destroyed a French-built Potez 54 twin-engine bomber and a Republican Newport. Losses and the tiny number of HE-51s in Spain led to the Escudero Rimbaud being broken up on the 23rd. This development did not deter Garcia Morato from drawing Republican blood in the Madrid skies. Flying one of the remaining Heinkels, he added another Newport to his tally on the 2nd of September. Attrition continued, and soon the lack of fighter aircraft in rebel hands reached a critical point. During these early September days, Garcia Morato did not remain idle due to the lack of fighters. He flew missions in the rebel bomber squadrons in the area, serving as a crew member aboard the Junkers Ju-52 trimotor bombers, which were also supplied by the Germans, which were attacking Republican targets in and around the city. This excursion into the bomber units was brief, however, as the rebels began to receive supplies of fighter aircraft from another source at this time. The Germans were not alone in supplying aid to the Spanish rebel cause. Mussolini's Italy also committed itself to the support of the revolt. In terms of numbers of men and equipment, their contribution was in fact much larger than that of the Germans. This included an air component, a larger counterpart to the more famous German Condor Legion, which was known as the Aviazione Legionaria. Like the German flyers in Spain, they were initially intended to equip nominally Spanish squadrons. For this purpose, squadrons were added to the organization of the Tercio, which was the so-called Spanish Foreign Legion, a crack corps of colonial troops from the Army of Africa, which formed the elite of the Spanish military and the hard core of its fighting strength. Though including many Italian pilots and support personnel, these squadrons were formerly just another part of the Spanish Air Force. This was mostly a matter of form, as these aircraft were usually flown into battle by Italians. In fact, when these units were added to the Tercio in October of 1936, Morato was one of only four Spanish pilots serving with them. This form of organization would persist only a short time, as the pretense was dropped when more Italian squadrons were sent into Spain. The fighters the Italians sent to Spain were the best in the theater when they arrived. These were the current model of the Fiat CR-32 biplane fighter. This was, like the Newport and the Heinkel, a single-engine, single-seat, open-cockpit aircraft. It used a 600-horsepower V-12 liquid-cooled engine, which could propel it to a speed of 220 miles per hour, or 360 kph, 
which was considerably faster than either of the preceding Rebel fighters. It was built for dogfighting and possessed superior maneuverability, being perhaps the best biplane fighter of all time in this regard. Its armament was similar to the other fighters in that it consisted of a pair of machine guns, but some were equipped with heavy 12.7mm Breda Staffet weapons, which gave them the heaviest punch of any fighter in Spain. Some of these machines were incorporated into the newly formed Tercio fighter squadrons. Garcia Morado was posted along with two of his comrades to the Primero Escuadrilla de Casa, or the first fighter squadron of the Tercio, commanded by the Italian Capitano Vincenzo de Qual. Garcia Morado led a flight of this unit, and was in fact the first Spanish pilot to fly the new Italian fighter. Like his compatriots flying the Heinkel, he was excited to receive the better performing machine, and this enthusiasm translated well into confidence with the new mount, and indeed Morado would begin flying combat patrols in the Fiat after only 85 minutes of instruction. On the 9th, he led his flight of three planes from Tablada to Casares in Extremadura, where the fighters could act in support of the continuing assault on the capital. His companions in this flight were two Italian pilots, Sergente Rafael Cianice and Achille Bifale. Two days later, his flight was involved in combat near Talavera with a formation of Republican planes flown by French volunteer pilots. These men were formed into a unit called the Esquadra Espana and had been drawn from the Reserve Corps of the French Armée de l'Air. He scored his first victory while flying the new mount in this dogfight, shooting down another Newport. This was Garcia Morado's fifth victory, officially earning him the customary ace distinction. Before the end of the month, Garcia Morato was posted to the newly formed 2nd Fighter Squadron of the Tercio, and tallied up four more Republican planes. On the 16th, he, along with the Italian Sergente Gianlino Bacciarotto, brought down a twin-engine Potez bomber not far from Naval Carnero, French plane coming down behind Republican lines. On the same day of this shared victory, he also brought down another Potez 540 on his own, also near Naval Carnero. On the 20th, he claimed another enemy biplane near Santa Olaja, reported to be a Spanish-built Hawker Fury. This biplane fighter was sometimes called the Hispano Fury after its maker, the Hispano Suiza firm. Only a very small number of Hispano Furies flew during the war, and none were lost on this day, so it was most likely a Brigade 19 or one of the various types of French fighters sent to the Republicans in these early days. On the 24th, the Spanish Fiats were rebased to Talavera Airfield, to be closer to the focus of the air war at that time, which was the area between Toledo and the capital. His last kill in September came the next day, when he brought down a Brigade 19 in the Vargas area. In October, he shot down another three enemy planes, two more brigades and another French-supplied fighter, a parasol-winged Loire 46, just outside the capital. On the 21st of October, he was involved in an aerial battle against a Republican formation consisting of six fighters of various types escorting a bomber unit composed of five brigades and a protest. Catching him at low altitude, a Loire fighter got the advantage of Garcia Morato. He was in serious difficulty against this skilled enemy pilot, who was saved by one of his squadron mates who shot the enemy plane off his tail. He went on to engage one of the brigades, but was unable to bring the Republican plane down despite expending most of his ammunition against it. Despite this comparative lack of success in this dogfight, his unit did well, accounting for the Loire fighter, a Blario Spad fighter, and the Potez bomber. On the 23rd, he was again in combat, and showed the destruction of a pair of Republican airships mounted at the Casa de Campo, the principal Madrid racetrack. Both airships were left burning, one of them an older unbraced blimp type and the other a semi-rigid design braced by an internal metal skeleton. In November, Garcia Morado continued flying combat missions over Madrid as part of the 2nd Fighter Squadron of the Tercio. At this time, he, along with the rest of the Rebel Air Force, began to encounter a new and very formidable set of enemy aircraft, which would become their principal antagonists for the remainder of the conflict. These were Russian planes supplied in quantity by the Soviet Union, and which were now reaching Spain in large numbers. The Soviets sent large numbers of armored vehicles as well, and, like these, the Russian planes were dominant when they first appeared in the theater. Four important types of Soviet combat planes appeared above Madrid during the period of the decisive November battles for the capital. One, the SB, was a sleek and modern twin-engine bomber, by far the most advanced bomber type serving on any side at this time. Often misidentified as export variants of the similar American B-10, they were frequently referred to as Martin bombers by rebel pilots. It was also given the nickname of Sofia or Katiuska. The performance of the SB was superior in some respects to that of the Heinkel and Fiat fighters in rebel service, 
particular, it was considerably faster than either, and thus very difficult to intercept. Another bomber type, this one a single-engine biplane reconnaissance bomber similar to the Breguet, also appeared. This was the RZ, or sometimes the R5, two-seater that became known as the Natasha amongst the various parties in the Spanish theater. A pair of advanced fighters, both products of the Polokarpov Design Bureau, also appeared in the ranks of the Republican Air Force at this time. These were the I-15 biplane and the I-16 monoplane. The I-15 was one of the best biplane fighters ever built, and a good match for the Fiat fighter in a dogfight. Like the SB bomber, the I-15 was often mistaken for an American design, and often called a, quote, Curtis fighter. Faster a biplane, while armed and highly maneuverable, it was dubbed the Chato by both sides. The I-16 was a stubby radial engine monoplane built for speed rather than maneuverability, and the first appearance of a modern, high-performance monoplane fighter in the Spanish theater. Like its stable mates, it was often thought to be an American plane, this time being mistaken for the Boeing P-26, though the Russian plane featured retractable landing gear unlike the P-26. Faster than the Fiat, it was at a disadvantage in a turning fight, but could usually use its superior speed, climb, and diving performance to decline any such combat if it found itself in trouble. Later versions of the I-16 appeared in subsequent months, with more powerful engines and armament, and these radas, or moscas, as the Spanish called them, presented a very formidable challenge even to the best Italian-built fighters. Nonetheless, in November, Garcia Morato proved that the Soviet planes were by no means invincible. In his CR-32, he shot down four Republican planes during the November air battles over the capital, one of them a twin-engine Potes 54 bomber. The other three were all new I-15 fighters. An example of the fighting that took place in the skies above Madrid happened on the 5th. This was one of the first big clashes between the rebel and Republican air forces, which only now were receiving aircraft in numbers sufficient to make air battles involving more than a handful of planes on each side possible. On this morning, a rebel formation of nine Fiats from the 1st Water Squadron of the Tercio was escorting three Italian RO-37s, sometimes called Romeos, which were two-seater reconnaissance bombers like the Brigades or the Natasha's. These were expecting to rendezvous with five more Fiats from Talavera when they encountered an enemy force consisting of 15 I-15s and a small number of Potez bombers, while in the area between the capital and the town of Leganes. In the ensuing dogfight, Garcia Morato brought down one of the Russian fighters and damaged the Potez bomber, knocking out one of its engines and forcing it to crash land behind Republican lines. The Republicans lost two of the new I-15s in this battle, including one flown by Lieutenant Peter Alexandrovich Mitrofanov, thus became the first Russian pilot to lose his life in Spain. The rebels lost one of their Fiats. This was flown by the leader of the first squadron, the Italian Capitano Carlo Alberti Macagno, who was flying his first combat mission in Spain. Badly wounded in the crash, he was captured by the Republicans. He was hospitalized and his leg was amputated. He was eventually repatriated to Italy as part of a prisoner exchange. On the 9th, Garcia Morato claimed another Chato. This brought his tally to 15 kills. He describes the action thus in his logbook, quote, Fiat Esquadrilla, Bomber Escort, Junkers and Romeo engaged by five Curtis fighters. Shot one down and machine gunned eight Sofias, preventing them from dropping their bombs. Anti-aircraft fire also seen. Total flying time, one hour, 50 minutes. On the 13th, another large combat took place between 14 Fiats escorting eight Rebel bombers and a formation of 16 Chatos, which dove on them from out of the sun. Despite the ambush, the Rebel pilots kept them away from the bombers and the attack broke up into a series of individual dogfights. In the course of these, Murato claimed another Chato shot down. The I-15 unit claimed six Rebel fighters shot down for the loss of two of their own. After the battle, on the return flight, the Fiats ran into a formation of five SBs. Murato damaged three of the Russian bombers in this combat, but claimed no kills. His logbook describes the battle in these words. Quote, Fiat Squadrilla, Bomber Escort. Junkers and Romeos bombing Rosales clashed with 13 Curtis fighters. I shot down one that caught fire in the air, and then machine gunned three Sofias till my ammunition ran out. Saw anti-aircraft fire. Total flying time, 1 hour, 30 minutes. Not long after this battle, a rift began to form between the Spanish pilots and their Italian officers in the fighter units. Morato and his comrade, Angel Salas, lodged complaints with their superiors in the Spanish Air Force that the Italian commander, Major Fagnani, 
was insufficiently aggressive and reluctant to engage the new Russian fighters. This came to a head when Salas disobeyed an order to refrain from crossing the front line in pursuit of the enemy. Fagnani attempted to have Salas arrested for insubordination upon his return from the mission. Morato intervened on behalf of his comrade, angrily claiming that in Spain, no one was arrested for displays of courage. One result of this episode was a determination to form Spanish-only fighter units once sufficient fighters could be found to outfit them. In December, more fiats arrived in Spain from Italy. Five of these were handed over to the Spaniards, and this allowed the formation of the all-Spanish units that had been planned. A special unit of crack Spanish fighter pilots was formed to use the Italian fighters. This was known as the Patrol Azul, or the Blue Patrol, with Garcia Marato as its leader. At first, consisting of only three pilots, the Blue Patrol was initially posted to the Andalusian front near Cordoba, where they were tasked with flying cover for the Brigade Reconnaissance Bomber Squadron there. The Cordoba sector, where Marato cut his teeth a few months before, was being targeted at the time by Republican bomber units equipped with the fast new Russian bombers. On the 3rd of January, Garcia Morato achieved a remarkable feat of shooting down a pair of these machines in his slower Fiat fighter. Climbing to high altitude and patrolling for them on a route they were known to take, Spanish Ace spotted the pair below him and dove his biplane down on them, building up speed and catching them as they sped along below. Both SBs fell to his machine guns. These were the only victories he would score against these very difficult opponents. He later described his exploit of this day in these words, quote, after several days of studying the attacks on Cordoba, I had worked out when the bombers usually appeared, what altitude they were at, and the direction from which they typically approached. Making full use of this information, I started flying standing patrols at a height of 16,500 feet over the city. One morning, while circling over Cordoba, I noticed two aircraft heading for the city at high speed. Heading towards them as fast as I could, quickly identified the contacts as two twin-engine bombers that had regularly been attacking Cordoba. I opened fire and hit one of the aircraft's engines, and soon caught a light, leaving a trail of thick black smoke in its wake. The stricken bomber turned around and headed back from whence it came, and I followed, hoping to see it crash. I also saw the second bomber turn back in the direction of home as well. The damaged bomber did indeed crash some 40 miles from Cordoba near the communist-held airport of Andujar, the aircraft being engulfed in flames. As I turned for home, my fighter came under attack from the second Martin bomber. This latter had somehow got within 1,200 feet of me and was firing at me with its two machine guns. This was a dangerous moment for me, as I was more than 20 miles away from nationalist territory. It never dawned on me that the bomber crew would dare attack me. However, I remained cool, banked away sharply, and fired back at the enemy. Luck was with me, as one of my bullets hit the airplane in a vital spot, and within seconds it had spun away and hit the ground, exploding in flames barely a mile away from my first victim. I then flew back to Cordoba, where I was showered with hearty congratulations from the city's civilian population. In February, the Blue Patrol was shifted back to the area of the capital to provide support during the battles of the Harama Offensive. On the 16th, Murato was summoned to Salamanca for a personal meeting with General Alfredo Candelan, the head of the Rebel Air Force, and given explicit orders to intercept enemy planes whatever the odds. This was a response to the apparent reluctance of the Italian pilots to engage the Republicans on unfavorable terms. This, he believed, was the result of orders given by senior officers of the Italian Air Force to its pilots to avoid unnecessary losses, especially to Soviet aircraft. The Russian fighters had decisively altered the balance of power in the air, and the Republicans now held a clear advantage over the Harama. Nonetheless, the crack fighters of the Blue Patrol made their presence felt over this battlefield. On the morning of the 18th, Two formations took off at the same time to attack Republican positions. One consisted of two Romeo R-37 bombers, escorted by Italian-piloted Fiat fighters. The other was made up of three Spanish-flown Junkers 52s, escorted by the three fighters of the Patrol Azul. Total fighter strength of the two groups was 25 Fiat CR-32s. The bomber's mission took them across the front line, which the Italian fighters had been forbidden to cross. When the Italians reached the frontier, they turned a patrol parallel to it in accordance with their orders. The Blue Patrol, consisting of Garcia Morato and his wingmen Narciso Bermudez de Castro and Julio Salvador, continued on along with the bombers, which carried out their attack and headed back towards rebel territory. On the way back, they encountered a large formation of Republican Policarpa fighters, ported as 21 Chatos and 18 Radas, near Aganda. In reality, they were up against three full squadrons, by Spanish pilots along with Russian and American volunteers. 
Although badly outnumbered, Garcia Morado led the Blue Patrol aggressively against the enemy fighters, and a vicious aerial combat broke out. This show of valor persuaded the fascist Italian pilots to disregard their orders and hasten to the aid of their Spanish allies. In the words of one of the Italian flight leaders, Lieutenant Degli Incerte, quote, All of the Italian fighter flights followed suit, despite having orders only to intervene following provocation. Our duty was to fight as courageously as possible to the end. The sudden onrush of the Italian fighters created a huge swirling battle in the skies above the town of Via Conejos. For several minutes, the two forces formed one single formation, consisting of a sinuous, twisting line of fighters, alternating one fiat, then two or three Polikarpovs, then another fiat, and so on. This disintegrated into numerous individual skirmishes, but the Italians and Spaniards held together in a relatively compact mass, covering one another. This gave them the advantage. One of the Republican planes went down, and the pilot took to his parachute, Fearing that the fascist fighters would machine gun the unfortunate pilot in his parachute harness, several of his comrades circled protectively around him as he floated down. This action split the combat into two distinct groups, and fierce fighting continued within these. Finally, after more than a half hour of combat, the I-15 squadron broke off and disengaged, followed shortly after by the I-16s, leaving the Spanish and Italian fiats alone above the Urama battlefield. Several Republican planes were shot down in the battle for the loss of only one of the Italian planes, which was lost in an emergency landing after the pilot had been wounded in combat. The Italians claimed eight fighters shot down and five more probables, while the Spaniards added another pair of fighters and two probables. Murado returned to his base with his Fiat shot up but still flyable. He was credited with shooting down an enemy plane, an I-15, which was his 18th overall, as well as one of the probable kills. This sharp defeat shifted the balance of power in the air over the Harama sector and ended the period of Republican air supremacy. His actions in leading this attack were recognized by the rebel leadership a couple of months later on the 17th of May 1937, when he was awarded the Cruz Laureata de San Fernando, one of Spain's most prestigious decorations for valor. This award was given for his actions during the period from his first sortie at the beginning of August until the February dogfight over the Harama front. In this period, he had flown no less than 150 combat missions, in the course of which he had been involved in 46 aerial battles and shot down 18 enemy planes. After the battle, a further eight CR-32s were provided to the Rebel Air Force. Consequently, on the 30th of March, the patrol Azul was expanded from a single patrol to a full squadron, the first all-Spanish unit flying Fiat CR-32s, which was designated as 1E3, Garcia Morado as commanding officer. Designation can be read as first squadron using Type 3 fighters. CR-32 having been given the code number 3 in the Rebel Air Force, being the third fighter type to be used after the Newport and the Heinkel. In April, more CR-32s arrived and were handed over to the Spanish, who used them to create another squadron, 2E3, with Angel Salas in command. These two squadrons were joined into a group, designated Group 2G3, which can be read as the second group using Type 3 fighters. Garcia Morato was given command of the group, while command of Squadron 1E3 was turned over to his longtime comrade Julio Salvador. The two squadrons had a strength of seven fighters each, plus Garcia Morato's group commander, making a total group strength of 15 planes. Garcia Morato's next big battle took place on the 12th of July. At about 1700 hours this day, a large clash took place between Republican I-15s and Rebel Fiat CR-32s. During the melee, Murado pursued the squadron leader of the Republican 1st Escadrilla, the Russian Ivan Yaromenko, and was only prevented from shooting him down by the timely intervention of the Serbian pilot, Bozidar Petrovich. Murado escaped Petrovich's attack, but the Serbian was not so lucky, as he himself was shot down by one of two E3's other pilots, Teniente Miguel Garcia Pardo. On the 18th, another aerial battle occurred between Navalcarnero and Valdemoril. Four Spanish CR-32s from 2G3, along with 23 more from the Italian 16th Grupo, intercepted a force of 12 Republican RZ bombers protected by 32 Polikarpov fighters of both types. The result was a victory for the rebels and Italians. The Republicans lost six bombers as well as three of the escorting fighters in exchange for one of the Italian planes. Murado was credited with one of the RZs, his 26th victory. On the 25th of August, Murado's Grupo 2G3 was sent to Aragon to assist in countering the Republican offensive that had been launched there the previous day. The Spanish Fiat units were based at Saragossa San Yorio, 
and were there joined by eight Italian CR-32 squadrons, the majority of their fighter strength in Spain at the time. Although clashes between the Fiats and the Republican Air Force were frequent in these last days of August, Spaniards were unable to claim any victories during this time. This changed immediately with the coming of September. On the 1st, Grupo 2G3 surprised and bounced a formation of 15 Chados near Belchite. Seven of the enemy fighters were claimed shot down, including one by Morato. In September, by which time his total victory counts stood at 27, Garcia Morato was sent to Italy on a technical mission. He remained there until December. In his absence, command of Grupo 2G3 was given to Angel Salas. On his return, he was posted to command the so-called 1st Air Brigade. This gave him responsibility for all the rebel air units on the northern front. He was back in combat over Aragon in March 1938. On the Aragon front, he flew with Grupo 2G3 in support of the rebel counteroffensive. On the afternoon of the 12th, 18 Spanish Fiats, in two flights led by Morato and Salas, flew cover for a raid by Rebel Junkers 52 bombers. Once they had escorted the bombers safely out of the danger zone, they patrolled above an area of the battlefield out to the town of Hajar. Here, the Rebel pilots ran into a Republican formation of 11 SV bombers escorted by 19 I-15s. In the ensuing clash, Garcia Morato shot down a pair of the Russian fighters, bringing his total to 30. Altogether, this battle was a signal success for the Rebels. Four more Chatos and an SB were claimed as destroyed, and another two Chatos probably destroyed, for no losses of their own. By the end of April, the rebel armies had reached the Mediterranean coast and cut Catalonia off from the remaining Republican territories. The Spanish CR-32 units, which meanwhile had been expanded to two groups with four squadrons in total, were rebased to Bello Airfield from which they could support the new rebel attack southwards towards Valencia. They would operate in conjunction with the Italian fighters, many of whom remained in the area, as well as the German Condor Legion, which was now beginning to deploy newer aircraft, including Heinkel HE-111 bombers and Mischerschmitt 109s in small numbers. During the slow drive on Valencia, Garcia Morato saw little combat, as he had been taken out of frontline service following his promotion to command of the 1st Air Brigade. However, he still flew occasional missions, mostly in the area of Teruel. A notable action took place on the 25th of June, near La Poba de Valverde. Here, a Republican unit of nine RZ bombers were attacking rebel positions, with an escort of three Chatos covering them from above. Morato approached the enemy while they were being taken under fire from rebel flak batteries. Disregarding the risk posed by his own troops' anti-aircraft fire, he was able to maneuver his CR-32 into firing position from below undetected. He quickly shot down two of the surprised RZs, and then escaped still undetected. His enemies apparently thought the bombers had been hit by flak, and they probably were, Smirato was officially to share the credit for these victories with the Rebel 4th Anti-Aircraft Battery. Morato describes the action in these words, quote, This was one of the actions that I will remember most enthusiastically for the rest of my life. I was flying my faithful 3-51 alone on a reconnaissance sortie over the front when I suddenly saw enemy aircraft heading in my direction towards our lines. Although it was clearly an unequal fight in the enemy's favor, I didn't want to quit and let them attack our forces without us trying to stop them. In fact, I should have abandoned my attack as I was flying at a lower altitude than the Republican formation. Nevertheless, I managed to take the bombers by surprise, as their escorts were still some way above them. Within a short time, two bombers fell shrouded in flames, while the other beat a hasty retreat. I left the scene without the fighters having noticed either their invisible enemy's arrival, nor his withdrawal. In the last days of June 1938, he was appointed commander of the 2nd Spanish CR-32 fighter group, designated 3G3. This group had been formed in December 1937 after further CR-32s had been supplied to Franco's Air Force. At the time he took over his new command, Morato's score stood at 35. Grupo 3G3 had been established with two squadrons, but by June consisted of three. From the 10th to the 18th, both Spanish Fiat fighter groups, six squadrons in total, operated together under Morato's direction. On the 18th, the two Spanish Fiat groups would relocate to Merida. Here, along with oppressive heat, they would find a break in operations. This would last until the 28th, when they returned to their previous base at Escatron. Spanish Fiat units were manned by the best fighter pilots that Franco Spain had to offer. They, and their Italian and German allies, were flying against a Republican air force that was still very strong. The enemy consisted of Spanish pilots, along with a large proportion of volunteers from Russia and elsewhere. The Russians were volunteers only in the formal sense. Like the Italian pilots, who were also nominally volunteers, 
They had mostly simply been ordered to the Spanish theater. The genuine volunteers came from all over the world, recruited like the international brigades of the Republican ground army by the common turn. They flew aircraft that had a performance edge over the Spanish fiats, but the pilots of Murado's six squadrons were in general more skilled than the Republicans. On the 25th of July, the Republican Popular Army crossed the Evro River between Fayon and Benefile. This was the beginning of a major campaign that would rage from then until the middle of November. Spanish fighter groups would be committed to this, which was in many ways the critical battle of the war, and certainly the last serious bid of the Republic for victory. Fighting in the air began immediately, with the Spanish, Italians, and now the Germans concentrating their air resources against the Republican Air Force, which is now near the height of its strength in terms of numbers, likewise concentrated on the Evero front. On the 1st of August, one of the first big clashes involving the Spanish fighters occurred between Grupo 3G3, led by Morato, and a large group of Chatos. Garcia Morato added another I-15 to his tally this day, and his pilots claimed another six. One Spanish pilot, Enrique Munez de Brea, was lost along with his CR-32. On the morning of the 14th, 18 fighters from both Spanish Grupos were in the air and engaged a large group of I-16s, reportedly more than 50. The fast Republican monoplanes were engaged in chasing down a formation of Condor Legion Heinkel 111 bombers, now being deployed by the Germans in place of the obsolete Junkers Ju-52. As the Spanish Fiats engaged the Ratas, more aircraft were drawn into the battle, including an estimated 28 Chateaus on the Republican side, German fighters, including Heinkel 51 biplanes and 10 of the new Messerschmitt Bf-109s, early models of which were now reaching the fighter squadrons of the Condor Legion. Morato shot down one of the Radas, one of six claimed by Spanish pilots in this battle. The 109s claimed seven more. The Republicans, for their part, reported that three of their squadrons fought an estimated 90 enemy planes that day, and admitted the loss of one Rata while claiming the destruction of three rebel fighters. The rebels reported the loss of only one Fiat with its pilot, Alferez Jose Maria Lesseps, while two more were forced by wounds and damage to make forced landings. One other Fiat returned to Escatron with severe damage, having been hit more than 30 times. On the 25th, the two groups were withdrawn from the Ebro and sent back to Merida in Extremadura. Here, a Republican attack across the Zuhara River had become dangerous. The Spanish fighters were sent to support operations against this enemy thrust. They remained here until the 18th of September, at which time they were sent back to the Ebro. On the morning of October 3rd, Morato led a force of 24 CR-32s over the battlefield to protect a bombing formation of Romeo RO-37s. While carrying out this mission, they encountered a large Republican formation of Chatos and Radas. There were about two dozen of the Russian biplane fighters at low level conducting strafing attacks against rebel ground forces, while a similar number of I-16s covered them from a higher altitude. Morato split his force against the Republicans sending 2G3 against the Ratas, while he led his 3G3 into an attack on the strafing I-15s. Twelve Fiats of Murato's group shot down two of the I-15s, but the twelve planes from 2G3, going up against double their own number of Ratas, soon found themselves in trouble. The Chatos split up and ran back towards Republican territory, and as they withdrew, Murato and his planes climbed to the aid of their comrades. Murato brought himself into firing position on one of the Ratas and opened fire serving hits on the enemy, which began to burn. However, neither of the Fiat pilots had chosen the same target, and Morato had flown into the path of his man's fire. 12.7mm machine gun rounds from the second Fiat smashed into Morato's engine, putting it out of action. Behind enemy lines, he turned his crippled plane back towards the rebel lines and glided back as far as he could towards the front, finally putting his fighter down safely in a vineyard. This would be the only time Morato was ever shot down in combat. He was able to evade enemy attention and reach the rebel line. The Republican I-16 pilots claimed nine Fiat shot down in this battle. The Chato units added another four. In reality, only Murato's plane and that of his longtime comrade Julio Salvador, now the commander of Escudero 1E3, were brought down. Salvador was less lucky than Murato, and he was captured by soldiers of the 46th Division of the Republican Popular Army, which was commanded by the communist leader Valentin Gonzalez. He would be sent to France and released after four months in captivity. Three Ratas, including one shot up by Morato before he was hit, were shot down in addition to the two ground attack Chatos. With the failure of the Republican offensive on the Ebro, the situation had become dire for the Second Republic and its popular army. 
Their exhausted forces faced Franco's large and victorious armies, ready now to simply continue the counterattack into the province of Catalonia. This was a terrible threat to the Republic, as Catalonia was the most economically and industrially advanced part of Spain. Its capital city, Barcelona, was second in importance only to Madrid itself. Worse still, the Soviet Union was supplying fewer tanks and aircraft, clearly scaling back its commitment to what was becoming a losing cause. However, though the Republic was on the back foot in late 1938, it was by no means beaten and could still put a respectable force of Soviet-supplied aircraft into the air. The Spanish fiat groups, under Morato's direction, were committed to Franco's December offensive into Catalonia. The six squadrons remained stationed at Escatron. The Italians committed most of the Aviación Legionaria's fiat squadrons to the battle here as well, and these units were posted to other airfields in the vicinity. The Italians brought about nine or ten fiat CR-32 squadrons. On Christmas Eve of that year, his unit was in combat near Fontiaga, about 20 kilometers north of Lerida. 18 Spanish CR-32s found a group of nine RZ bombers here. These were escorted by two squadrons of I-16s from the Republican 21st Fighter Group. However, the fighters were somewhat distant from the bombers when Morato's planes made contact, and the Spanish fighters were able to make two attack passes at them before the Rados could intervene. The result was a massacre. Garcia Morato accounted for three of the enemy machines himself, along with a probable kill. The other Spanish pilots added six more claims, accounting for the entire group. In fact, this was not very far exaggerated. Six in total were shot down in this combat, three of them managing to crash land in their own territory. The Republicans lost three dead and eight wounded in this action, with another two men taken prisoner. The Spanish lost one plane to the counterattacking Ratas. This was the CR-32 piloted by Captain Rafael de Mendazabal Almzaga, fell into Republican territory and was taken prisoner. After six weeks in captivity, he was executed. Another Fiat with a wounded pilot was forced to return to its base at Almenar. Garcia Morato's 40th and final victory came at midday on the 19th of January, 1939. On this day, a group of 12 CR-32s, six from 2G3 and six from 3G3, were patrolling near Igualada, a town on the Lerida barcelona Road. They were accompanied by five other Spanish fighters from Grupo 5G5, led by Capitan Miguel Garcia Pardo. This unit flew German Heinkel HE-112s, a rival monoplane designed to the Messerschmitt 109 some of which had been given to the Spaniards. While in this area, they ran into a Republican force of 16 Chateaus and 13 I-16s. Morato brought down a Chateau in this action. And it was not just because of Morato's final victory that this patrol was remarkable. His counterpart in the HE-112 unit destroyed one of the Ratas, and this was the only air-to-air -air victory credited to the Heinkel fighter in Spain. At the end of the war, Garcia Morato was chief of operations of the rebel fighter force. During the conflict, he had flown 511 missions, totaling 1,012 hours in the air, took part in 56 aerial battles, and scored 40 victories. He died shortly afterwards, on the 4th of April, having survived two and a half years of war and combat, while being filmed for Franco's newsreels. He was performing a mock combat with a captured I-16 over Grignon Airfield, and during low-level inverted flight, his Fiat's engine cut out. His plane smashed into the ground and killed him instantly. The funeral was attended by more than 20,000 people, including Franco and Candelon. He is posthumously awarded the individual medal and promoted to major. The Italians also honored him, awarding him the Medaglia de Oro al Valor Militare. In 1950, he was given honorary nobility by being granted the newly created title of Count of the Harama as a token in honor of his victory over that battlefield. His personal emblem was used on the aircraft of the modern Spanish fighter wing number 11, based at the airfield of Morne de la Frontera. And so that is where I will end this episode. I hope you found some of what I had to say here interesting or useful. The Spanish part in the air battles that took place during the Civil War there is often overlooked in favor of the larger contributions of the forces of the intervening powers. This can often give the impression that the Spanish possess little in the way of skill in this arena of combat. I hope that this episode could shed a light on the reality of the situation. While numerically smaller than the Italian or German air forces in Spain, the Spanish rebel fighter force is made up of pilots who are no less skilled than their allies. Next time we'll turn to take a look at a new topic, and to begin another short series. Very interested in the technical evolution of military technique in the interwar period. 
The next episode will start taking a close look at the experimentation in one area of modern warfare during this time, that of amphibious assault. We'll look at the efforts of the three nations which would practice the attack from the sea most often in the Second World War and see how their interwar experience influenced the doctrine and equipment they would bring to these battles. We'll start next week by looking at the British approach. So I hope you'll join me for that. Till then, as always, I remain Mark Seven, wishing you all the best.